My wife and I love to go on walks. We walk almost every day that it's nice outside. It just feels good to get outside, to move, to stop staring at a screen, stop watching what the media is saying, just get fresh air. You just, you feel human again. Like we, we really center ourselves on our walks. And we also get to meet the neighbors and talk to the neighbors, which you know, these days it's nice to get out and do that. And the other day we're walking and one of our neighbors was driving past in his pickup truck and he stopped on the road and rolled down his passenger window and he had his hand on the wheel. He's got a nice big beard, which I always appreciate. He was kind eyes, salt of the earth kind of guy. And he looked out the window and he goes, hey, man in America. And we started chatting. His name's Craig. Nice man. And we were talking. He says, I've got a little bit of a dilemma. He goes, I work in a big company and they started ruling out this diversity training. So, okay. And he said, but the, this diversity training, it's really pinning a lot of things on white men. It's really targeting white men. He goes, Seth, he goes, I've got two boys. I have two sons. What is their future going to look like? What do I do? He said, I thought about, do I speak out or do I say something and risk being canceled or losing my job? Or do I just do nothing and surrender and roll over? He said, I just don't know what to do. He said, what, what can we do? And at that moment, a car pulled up behind him. And so the conversation got cut off. And I really started thinking about that though. And it really, uh, really hit me thinking about what do we do? I mean, it seemed like before, after the election, there were the next thing we were looking towards was January 6th and these different events that we kind of pinned our hopes on. And, um, but I think that a lot of us now, after the inauguration, everything just feel frozen. And you watch the media, and the media is basically saying it's either anger, it's making you angry what this side's doing, or it's making you fearful of something in the world, whether it's a virus or whatnot. So you're constantly bouncing back and forth between anger and fear and anger and fear. And uh, I, for me, it just left me very frozen, this feeling of not knowing what to do. And I was thinking about Craig's question and thought back to, you know, how did I get to where I am? How did I get to this place of having a YouTube channel and really putting myself out there? Because I can tell you, growing up, I was not someone that was running towards conflict. I grew up, as I mentioned in, previously, in small town Ohio, was raised to be very polite, you know, don't talk about religion or politics. And that's how I lived most of my life. I wasn't ruffling feathers. I was friends with most everybody and really valued just being polite to people and, and not getting into conflicts. And that went, I think, overall pretty well for me until recently some things started happening. And it was last summer that I really hit a wall with that. So I joined, there's an online app or you know, website a forum. It was really something to meet neighbors. It's something we can join up and you can meet people in your community. You put your real name, your real picture and what neighborhood you're in. And so I joined it to get to know people in the neighborhood. And it's interesting because as I watched the conversations happen, on this app, I, I noticed that there was just so much division. There was so much name calling and finger pointing and uh, on topics that were more sensitive, like, you know, race in the schools or the lockdowns or wearing masks. I saw so much, I almost would say hatred coming out of people. And it, it really hit me. I mean, I spent a lot of my life trying to really understand tyranny. I was drawn to understanding that. And what I noticed in countries leading up to tyranny, whether it was communist China at the beginning or uh, Russia or Cambodia, is that it always started with this kind of division. It was finger pointing and blaming and saying, okay, this group caused this problem. And it seemed like what was happening was that in all those situations, there was a, an enemy that was actually the, the, the people at the top, the, the, the tyranny, the dictatorship at the very top. And the people down below were fighting back and forth and back and forth. And 
I saw this happening on this you know, platform, on these forums, and I really thought, you know, I should say something. But like I mentioned, it's very public. It's my name and my profile. And I'm thinking, okay, like, I, I'm not sure if I want to put myself out there. There's a Chinese saying, it's uh, no one wants to be the front duck. Basically, what it means is that the front duck is the one that gets shot. So most people want to wait for someone else to go out there and do something first. Um, but as I watched this playing out, I thought to myself, well, it was similar to, I think, what Craig is experiencing. So I, I feel like I should say something, but do I want to say something? And you know, I have a, I have a local business that my business will be on the line, or um, do I want to, you know, the fear of being ostracized or criticized or slandered. But I also didn't want to just sit and let this go idly and not say anything. So I actually started saying some things. I put a few posts up and nothing too controversial, I wouldn't think. I talked about censorship. I talked about um, some things I saw happening with the local government that were you know, very tyrannous in terms of control over people and our lives and our health. And you would not imagine, I had the fury of a thousand liberal soccer moms unleashed upon my soul overnight. And it was really kind of interesting because I saw it play out that much stronger once I started talking. And, and it was a real shock to me. But I, that action and taking that small action, it gave me this little bit of courage. Like, huh, I did it. It wasn't that bad. But what's interesting is that shortly after that, I got a phone call uh, from one of my neighbors. And I said, okay, this is odd. And so this neighbor called me up and she said, Seth, I saw your post online and I saw your comments that were online. I thought, uh, okay. <laughs> and she, you never guess what she said next. She said, thank you. She said, thank you so much for putting yourself out there and speaking and actually talking about those things. She was me and so many of my friends were all watching these conversations unfold. And we were watching and we were, we were rooting you on from the sidelines. And that was, gosh, that was an incredible feeling to have that. I was like, wow, I didn't really realize. I was just putting a comment up, but I realized that when commenting, it wasn't, I wasn't going to change the opinion of the person I was talking to, but it helped me understand that there's a lot of people that are watching on the sidelines and waiting and seeing and that. I think I influenced a lot of people that are watching and seeing these conversations unfold. But it really gave me more courage. And then another person reached down the platform. It was a neighbor. She said, I'd, I'd love to come over and meet you and your wife. And she came over and we met her. And it, it started building this community, started meeting people. And it really helped me understand how even online, you can start to affect things offline. And the next step, though, was my business. Right, so I have a small business and I have clients that come through. And I started talking to some of my clients. I used to not talk about these things. I don't talk politics with clients. But to me, it wasn't about politics. It's about what's happening in our country. So I started talking to some of my clients. And I, I found that, gosh, the majority of them would say, Seth, this is exactly what I've been thinking. I've been worried about the same things, but I feel like I can't talk about these things. Thank you for talking about this. And I had. I had one lady in particular that was, was really, really moving. Uh, she, she really affected me. I started talking to her and she started crying. And she said, I'm from Romania and I've lived under communism. And she said, this, that's what I see happening here in America. And I've talked to my friends and a lot of my friends actually stopped talking to me. She said, even, even my own son is judging me and will barely talk to me. She says, I've felt so alone. I've just felt so alone. And she started crying and she gave me the biggest hug. And she said, thank you so much for talking to me. She's like, I don't feel alone anymore. I know that now I can see there's other people out there that, that understand what's happening. And a similar thing happened with a gentleman from Venezuela who said, Gosh, he said, Seth, we had this conversation about what's happening in our country. And he goes, it's exactly what I saw happening in Venezuela. And he goes, it's so amazing to meet an American. He goes, you guys have never known tyranny in America in this generation. 
you live in a free, beautiful country. He goes, I rarely will meet an American that, that feels so passionately about what's happening. He goes, it feels so good to connect with somebody and to see that there's someone else who cares. And these things, these events that were happening, it, it really encouraged me so much. And encourage is a unique, interesting word to say because it gave me courage. It gave me more courage to do the next thing. Like every little bit, it started off with something online as simple as putting a comment on. But that led to all these things and my courage at every step increased to do the next thing. And so then I thought, well, you know, I should talk to my family members. And so there's one particular family member that, um, you know, great guy, I talked to him a lot, but his views are very different than mine. And um, we haven't really gone there, but we sat down for, you know, a long evening and just talked. And I shared my perspective of not just politics, but what was happening in our country as I saw it. And he was really moved, actually. It really, it changed his perspective on things. He said, gosh, you know, no one's ever framed it like that. And he said, Seth, it's kind of funny going back to this. He goes, Seth, you should create a YouTube channel. <laughs> and I thought, no, no, I'm not going to do that. You know, I, I thought about it and you know, my, I don't want to affect my business. And, you know, you know, I grew up not talking about politics and religion, let alone not, you know, create a YouTube channel talking about politics and religion. And I thought about it and just my immediate thing was no, it was more of a probably fear, right? But I thought, well, maybe I should, maybe I should do this. And I thought, well, I've, I have background in media. I was always behind the scenes though. And I have certain creative talents, I guess. And I thought, well, maybe I could, maybe I could do that. But even then, I didn't really act on it. This was before the election, and this kind of let the idea slip to the side. And then we got through the election and all the stuff that we all saw happen there. And I was watching President Trump and all the slander, everything that he was bearing for us, everything that he was going through. His whole reputation was being dragged through the mud. Everyone was after him. The media was after him. I thought to myself, if this man can do that, for us and sacrifice everything and risk everything, then why can't I make a YouTube channel or do this? And so I did. And here I am. And what I've understood through this process is that it was actually the small acts of courage that got me here. And if I wouldn't have taken the first step to do that, I probably would have still been frozen. But what I've also understood in this process is that there's fighting and there's the you know, running away and there's being frozen in the middle. But also when you're not fighting or running, if you find your center, I think that you can really tap into your own wisdom about how to do things and how to fight without fighting, without you know, taking things to the street. And you can find the ways to tap into what you can do. Because I believe that all of us have talents given to us by God that, that we can use to, to fight this battle. And I realize that I'm just one person. I'm just one man, one man in America. But look how much of an effect I, I can have. You know who else realized that? All these people, just ordinary people like you and I, trading in stocks with $500, $2,000 accounts that brought down multi-billion dollar hedge funds and practically the stock market overnight because they actually stood up and did something. And that's what this all comes to, is that there's certain things we don't have control over. We can't control DC. We can't control the media. But these small steps, those difficult conversations, talking to your neighbor, doing something online, doing something at the local school board or the local church, these small things that we have control over, we do these things. We have the ability to take our freedoms back. We have the ability to take our conscience back. And we have the ability to take our country back. <laughs> 